today's video, I'm going to show you how to adjust behind your blitz. I think this is the most important part of blitzing once you have a good blitz setup is what zones do you put behind it and really why do you put them there? That's, I think, super, super important. So today we're going to be covering really the main um, couple blitzes that you're going to be seeing online and, and really the ones that I think are the best. So DB Fire 2, we're going to have free safety zone blitz. Now this does cross apply to other things and I'll try to briefly cover 6-1 if we have time here at the end of the video. But in general, this is, this is kind of the standard way that you want to be adjusting behind your blitzes and understanding kind of your purpose. So uh, your purpose of blitzing. So your purpose of blitzing is really a couple of things. Number one, you're trying to communicate to your opponent that if they want to send five out all game, you're going to instantly sack them. Nobody likes to get screamed at. Nobody likes to get pressured. And so being able to have a threat of a blitz is fundamentally important for every defense ever. OK, now I'm showing you stuff out of the Kansas City playbook today. If you want to get my full ebooks on all of my defenses, they're all in the Patreon for just ten dollars, fully optimized, fully updated. The link is down below. You get access to all ebooks, everything for ten bucks. Again, links in the description for our coaching adjustments is pretty much standard how I like to do it. Auto flip off baseline on and then zone coverage or zone drops really whatever you want. It seems to me the standard meta is either a 20 yard curl flat just like this or a five and 30. Okay. And it just depends on what coverages you want to run. Okay. For now, we'll leave them on default to kind of explain this. So if you think about blitzing in Madden and you think about the, the big idea here with it, what can you take away? And this is where I want to get into kind of your general philosophy of how how coverage really works in Madden. So the way that you, when you send five at an opponent, you cannot take everything away. The only real defense that I would say kind of takes everything away or can certainly do that is some of these really cool like hybrid coverages. So one of them being cover three cloud, for example. Uh, with this outside third to the wide side, it will take away double corner well. And then you can pretty much either cross man. You can leave this hook curl to guard the running back. This is pretty good. Uh, what I would probably do is shade underneath and then re-cloud. Uh, I think that's the best way to run this defense. And essentially, all my user has to do, because I have two yellow zones, is I just have to run with the crosser from right to left. So you'll see if I run double corners completely dead. But let's say I run Durham, for example this coverage does a pretty good job, okay? So again, and it's fairly simple, but I'm just looking for the slot. Okay, I see he's going. Now, that running back is open right there, but that's a tough throw. If you have a big player, like that's a tough throw, okay? So in general, that's kind of my my, my idea or my, my philosophy, right, of, of when you want to drop eight. Uh, it typically is going to be something like that. Now, another way – that drop eight, uh, that drop eight can happen. This is really a, a good method of drop eight. Another way you could do it would be, you know, basically like this. Um, another method is two flats. Uh, you could have, you could have, um, you know, you, I mean, there's just a lot of different things you could do. But in general, this this curl flat on the left side, also real quick, uh, this curl flat on the left side is something else. So you could shade and then you could put this curl flat here. And what's, what can happen with Durham is if you take the running back, this curl flat sometimes can get enough depth to get back on that ball. Okay, it doesn't always happen, didn't right there. Another method in which we could cover Durham, for, for example, uh, would be this right here. So what we could do is the coverage on the right is the coverage on the right, but what we could then do on the left is we could go with a cloud on that outside player and then a shaded down yellow on both sides. So you see here, this would do a pretty decent job of covering most of what Durham can do. And again, the tight, you just want to make the running back throw a tight window with KOs. It makes it a little easier. But as you see, this is decent Durham and double corner defense. Now, how is that defense structured from a coverage perspective? This is really important. 
the way this defense is structured from a coverage perspective, if you watch it right here, is you have these intermediate flat routes. You have these cloud flats on the field. Same over here, cloud flat on the field. You then have these fill-in zones with your, with your yellows, your vert hooks, your hook curls, okay? Those are really, 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 really important, okay? So what, when we talk about like passing and clo closing off some of the throwing lanes that people like to use, this would be probably the most optimized like Durham defense, okay? Again, you're still – the running back throw is there, but as you see, like that's the throw, and that's into a KO, and it's got to be perfectly timed. It's a tight window, but it's, it's kind of there, right? It's kind of there. So another way – so it, it's just really hard to stop Durham, but, but the point is – this also stops double corner well. Again, it's these intermediate cloud flat zones that do this with some other yellow zones. When you send five, you can't take away the mid-range. You can't take away the mid-range. Uh, so when we send five out of free safety zone blitz, for example, we can't really take away the mid-range. The best way to, to play defense when you send five is to either roll your coverage, scissor your coverage, or try to take away the layups and the open threes. By open three, what I simply mean when I say an open three-pointer is a spot-up three where there's no defender. So it would be like a deep crosser, and there's just nobody there, right? You see here, there's just nobody there. That would be what I mean when I say don't give up the open three. There's no deep protection, okay? Then when I also – and then when I say don't give up layups, what I'm talking about is when we do something like this to try to stop double corner, right, and they call Durham, and this is open, you know, for 20 yards. It's a layup. It's the very first read they have is the flats, right? Or Durham, uh, another variation of Durham – which is this right here. What's the first read on the play? It's circled to, to, to the tight end, right? So how can I make this a really hard play for them to hit? Well, I can go free safety zone blitz. Um, and then I don't know why he did that. Sometimes he does this. And then because they put the running back out here, I know that the flat can – it doesn't kill me. So I'm going to put a vert hook in case he's on a drag, shade down, and now where does my user need to go? Well, all I got to do is kind of go here to here and they're sacked, right? Because they're sending five out. Super important, super, super important. When you play coverage behind your blitz, you got to make sure that you are not giving them layups and you are not giving them three pointers. We are going to give them the mid range. What do I mean by the mid range? By the mid range, I mean. The double corner, short corner, okay? And let me explain. This route, we are willing to give up. So, like, even here on the left side, the, the guy is not a super big threat to the flat. There's no flat threat to the left. Most of the time, that guy on the left is going to be on a drag. So, we're going to put a vert hook out there and shade down until they make us respect the flat when we send five. So the point here is where, how are we going to – and, again, the only adjustment I would make to this would be I would either put this on a hard flat or I would do this uh, where, we, where we maybe do a defense like this, okay? Those are the two things. But if you watch any competitive Madden, um, you will see these adjustments are the adjustments w that typically happen when they send five. It's typically this coverage or it's this coverage – right it could be maybe a scissor but it's these it's we're trying to take away the instant throws we're trying to make you hold it for a second so what does this coverage do where's my user got to go here well i just go over here kind of muddy this up and then work back here and by that time you see they're sacked they can't we make them make tough throws you make them make tough throws and the tough throws are the intermediate throws 
For example, if you wanted to do the same concept, but you were in man coverage, right? We're in man coverage. We're going to do the same exact principle, okay? How are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to send five off the left side. So then we're going to go ahead and we are going to cross man the tight end. We're going to man circle up and we're going to drop a cloud flat. So now we take away all of the snap throws to the right and then we force them to have to make the intermediate throw over here on the left side. So as you see here, boom, and then we're able to cover stuff for long enough for the blitz to come in. Does it work every single time? No, it does not work every single time. But your user is basically a yellow zone, right, in, in terms of practically how this is going to play out. So if they're running Durham, which is one of the best ways to beat the blitz is to run Durham, you can user this really easily if you do what I just said in terms of the we're taking it's basically cover three is basically um, the, the idea now DB fire two same basic principle how can we apply this to DB fire two well we're gonna throw a deep half here on the left right we're gonna throw a uh, purple and we're gonna shade down and then if you want to you can cloud on the right why because if I see a flat to the left, my user can run there. So I'm going here, and then I'm lurking back in here because I have a yellow zone for help over the middle. So let's take that same exact principle, and let's apply that to 4-3, even 6-1. And we'll actually change formations just for fun. We'll go to regular bunch. Okay. How does this apply to 4-3, even 6-1? So the 6-1 blitz, the first variation of the 6-1 blitz, would be this five man version right here, okay? And then how are we gonna craft our coverage behind this to make it effective? It's very simple. We are going to take away the layup throws, right? And we wanna basically be a hook curl defender with our user, okay? That's really important. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take, take the linebacker on the left, drop him into a hard flat. We're gonna drop this guy on the left in a hook curl, and then we're gonna have a middle third, and we're gonna shade, shade underneath. That's it. This five-man coverage setup is really good. They're going to have to make hard throws. And if they start hitting you with that right there, then guess what adjustment we're going to go with next time? Now we're going to do what's called scissoring. We're going to play man on that side to take away the instant throws on that side. Okay, And then on the right side here, we have a couple different options. One of the options I really like would be to go with a cover two with a shaded down vert hook and then recloud this guy on the right. This is a great coverage for the quick hitting stuff out of bunch. And then let's say they run something like this. I know the vert hook's going to play the tight end. So where am I going? Crosser to Texas. Boom. Okay. It's stuff like that, guys. It's these, um, it's these quick little, like, just different methods to get there. So another really good fun one. Uh, let's say let's say you wanted to blitz this linebacker on the right side. So what we can do here on the right is we're going to take that safety and we're going to put him in a purple and we're going to shade down and then we're going to half that guy right there on the deep. So now you've got a cover two to the right, but it's inverted. And guess what? This is going to do a really good job of taking away a lot of stuff. If they run this Y curl setup, where are you going to go? Well, you got to go to the streak, and then you're going to kind of bait back in here, and you see how this is going to work. If I want to send six, um, so if you want to send six, you have to understand why you're sending six, so and what you can actually use her. You have to be honest with what you can use her. So against bunch, if I'm going to send six against bunch, what I typically like to do is couple different options, but I'm mainly sending six because I'm anticipating that they're blocking their running back, right? So what I like to do typically is kind of a couple different methods. You could do a hook curl on a deep half on the left side with a cover two on the right. You could do this right here. This is perfectly fine. This is good adjustments. Uh, you could do a roll coverage that looks like this and this is good because you can still have flat protection there to the right side and then you can kind of feel free that and if you see the running back go guess who's got to go get him you 
right? You could do that as well. Um, so this does a great, great job of not tying your adjustments up. And then you can still send six. So if the running back gets sent out, all I got to do is come over here and kind of take it in the middle of the field. And I've got the flat defender. Again, it's really, really important not to give up layups and threes. So another simple method would be uh, I'm going to play just a basic cover two. But what I would probably recommend is on the side that you are going to go help with, I would probably recommend a cloud flat there and a hard flat on the other side. Why? Because you can take the underneath super flat if you need to, and then it allows it allows you to kind of lurk kind of there and then back to the middle. So those are some really, really big tips for how to adjust when you're sending pressure. Obviously, you are going to adjust to tendencies 100% of the time. But in general, you know, if I'm playing bunch, I probably want a defense that looks something like what you see here. And then if they can pick up the blitz, like let's say we get, you know, double corner or corner to the, to the right. Well, right here, you know, I don't have anything to guard the drag. So what I would do is I'd run here and then I'd come back here and try to make tackle. And I'm trusting my pressure to get home. You want to force them to have to make the hardest throws possible. That is such a super, like, people just don't understand how good this defense right here really is against Bunch because what's my user going to do at the snap? I'm sprinting out to this throw right here. That's where I'm going every time. And really the, 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 the best adjustments, in my opinion, for Bunch is really this right here. Um, it's, it's this right here. Okay. Because they can't snap throw the running the, the flat to the right, the running back you know they kind of got to wait on it a little bit. Um, another really good adjustment for bunch would be this. So you really kind of go in between the third adjustment, the scissor adjustment. Obviously the pressure should be good. And then one last little underrated thing to say about this is when you're playing max coverage, what are you doing? Well, you're going this adjustment right here would be a pretty standard way. Another one would be this adjustment right here, okay? Another adjustment would be double Mabel. Another adjustment would certainly be double Mabel, okay? Something like this. So the coverage defenses are just adding in kind of that intermediate coverage, and then your pressure defenses are saying, I think I can get enough pressure where you're not going to be able to hit some of these intermediate, some of these interme more intermediate routes, right? Now, how would this apply to a more spread out formation like trips tight in? It's very similar, uh, certainly very similar. So what we would be looking to do against trips tight in is we would be looking to, again, understand what can we use or what can we give up. So what I like to do against trips, these are my favorite adjustments uh, for trips right now, is we're going to send that pressure off that tight end side because I can use her this right side. And then we're just going to man up the triangle receiver with the safety, and then middle third, this guy on the left. And then what I like to do is probably still third. I would probably third instead of quarter, that outside guy. But what this is going to do is we're going to get really good pressure, right? And then at the snap of the ball, we're just going to kind of lurk in here. If the tight end comes across, we're going to use him. And the pressure is going to come in super, super fast. Another thing that you can do against trips tight end that I think is really good is you can take this linebacker, man him up on circle, and now you're sending your pressure, right? You're sending your pressure, but you also have pretty good coverage, super deep coverage, of course, you know, but let's say they do this and you see, look how fast the pressure comes in. If they, if they send five out, like, so how do they block in trips? They have to block a running back or a tight end. If they motion block, the route combos aren't that great, honestly. So if they start doing that, then that's where we can kind of get into our six man pressure. Why? because we don't have to care about the tight end. We can just run a quarter and a cloud over here on the right side to take care of the tight end. And then now we're gonna kind of mix it up, but now we're going over to the left and taking that circle receiver first, right? That's, an, that's another option uh, in, our, in, our, in our option or in our menu. Um, another thing you can do is scissor on the trip side. 
Why would you do this adjustment here to the left? It just does a really good job of taking away the streaks, um, the seam streaks and the flat. So you don't really have to worry about those two receivers. And then you're really just putting your a significant amount of tension on circle. So one thing you could do is either man up circle or another one that I like to do is I'm just going to use him. I'm just going to say, you're not throwing to him. You're not throwing to him. You could do this as well. Again, we're talking about just taking away the quick stuff. Another thing you could do is you could scissor both sides. So you could do this. And now all you do from a user perspective is where's circle going? As that's who I'm guarding. Everybody else is going to be covered. So using cross man is also helpful. Um, also very, very helpful, right? Because you have deep zone KOs now, what I love to do here on the left is I love this, just this simple defense right here. And then we'll blitz off the trip side. And the reason we were blitz, able to blitz off the trip side now is because our, we, our deep zone KOs, right? So what I would probably do here is I would start towards the tight end to get the blitz to come in. But then I would very quickly get back to the, the, the trip. So I'm going boom, right? So you see how my lurk is kind of kind of piecing with my adjustments. One of the super simple adjustment against trip side in is kind of what we did against bunch. Just with that shaded down hook curl to the left side, we have a hard flat on the opposite side. Um, that's another really good adjustment, I think. Uh, if you wanted to do it, you could do it a couple different ways. You could do uh, basically this here on the right, and then we're going to blitz you on the left with a hard flat. Now, if you were to do these adjustments right here, this is where you got to be really intentional with your user. Your user has to get over here to the left side to get to that seam streak. But it's just all about being intentional with your user and making them throw the hard stuff. And then if I want to play all out coverage against uh, trips, then I might go to something that's going to be better against the intermediate routes, right? So I might go to something that looks like this. This is really good trips D right here, very simple. And we are able to put a lot of coverage on the field and we just cut the tight end across. So those are some ways that you can kind of craft your coverages behind your pressures and force your opponents to not be able to shoot layups, to not be able to shoot threes wide open, but to have to shoot contested mid-range jumpers where they're having to fit the ball into tight windows. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your Madden game to the next level, join our Patreon membership today for just $10. It'll get you access to literally everything I know about Madden, including all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.